Nuclear energy has been a staple in Idaho for decades, and that legacy continues today. New developments in nuclear could soon be making the energy more sustainable and accessible for Idahoans and the rest of the country. News Channel 7's Jude Binkley recently went out to the eastern Idaho desert where he got a rare look inside the Idaho National Laboratory. Jude? Well, Doug, nearly 20% of the nation's electricity is generated by nuclear power. And as that demand increases, the INL is working on new developments that will power nuclear energy into the future. People are recognizing the potential for, for nuclear energy as a clean baseload source of power. The Idaho National Laboratory was established in the southeast Idaho desert in 1949. Two years later, the town of Arco became the first city in the world to be powered by nuclear energy, a power source in its infancy back then. Today, nuclear energy has evolved into a source that produces 50% of the country's carbon-free electricity. We're, we're at, a, at a point in our evolution as, as a country and as, as, as humankind of, of realizing that, that we're incredibly power intensive and this is only increasing the need. This is EBR-1. It was the first nuclear reactor in the world to make usable energy in 1951, powering the legacy for nuclear energy in Idaho. But what about the future of nuclear energy? So we're standing in, at the Materials and Fuels Complex at Idaho National Laboratory. Um, this is the, the dome, which stands for Demonstration of Microreactor Experiments. Over the last 70 years, nuclear energy has gone from factory-sized power plants to things that could soon be made in factories. PCAT is a prototype for the Marvel Microreactor, a small nuclear reactor that can be shipped to different locations with enough power to energize a small city. Can power a few thousand homes to get an idea. And most of the time they can produce both heat and electricity. If I could use the term agile, and I've used the term agile to describe nuclear. In the beginning, nuclear plants had teams of people working around the clock to produce power. Now, new microreactors, about the size of a semi-truck, can be placed in remote locations. They're self-regulated, so they don't require many people to operate. So very small amount of fuel, smaller reactors, smaller facilities um, that you can actually have, you know, spread around in various communities. So the benefit of microreactors then becomes now instead of a centralized power generation, now you can have smaller microgrids serving different communities in a decentralized way. And obviously, you know, that gives a higher resilience to the overall grid infrastructure. Arafat says that higher resilience will help disaster-stricken areas avoid wide-scale power outages. The reactors can also help rural communities where energy costs are high. So the idea is we can actually transport a system like this once and be able to power it for multiple years before refueling is needed. A microreactor prototype is being tested to model how the final product will work before INL finishes construction of the Marvel microreactor next year. We're trying to get to net zero of this campus by 2031. And we already uh, have uh, energy source from solar, some wind, so we want to be able to bring all the clean energy technologies together, including nuclear. Just east of the main INL site, the Energy Systems Laboratory is researching those different types of energy production and distribution. Well, really, it all comes down to one, one benefit, and that's uh, carbon, carbon emission reduction. So, um, you know, allowing a nuclear power plant to stay cost effective is sort of a side benefit, but um, you know, really reducing our carbon footprint from, from industrial and commercial processes. And if we can get to that point, then a lot of the campuses around the United States, whether it be universities, hospitals, small communities, uh, they can actually follow that blueprint to convert their uh, sites to net zero as well. So that's our long-term goal. And I believe Marvel plays an essential role in that overall process. However, not everyone is happy about the new developments in nuclear. One concern is about what happens with the waste. It's radioactive waste, so it's probably the most dangerous waste that we can create. Um, we can't treat it. We can't make it less radioactive. All we can do is let it become less radioactive with time. Um, it's dangerous to have around people. It's dangerous um, as we're creating it over our aquifer. The Snake River Alliance calls themselves Idaho's nuclear watchdog. 
they're opposed to new nuclear waste. Microreactors would produce a similar type of waste as large nuclear reactors. It's very dangerous, it's very dirty, and it's, it's, never, it's not getting any cheaper. However, the Alliance says INL has made advancements in cleaning up nuclear waste from decades ago when scientists didn't fully understand how to handle it. Nuclear waste is stored in casks underground where it decays over time. INL says advanced reactor technologies can also reuse or recycle some waste, but waste still needs to be stored somewhere. Presumably, it will leave the state and go to this repository that doesn't yet exist. <laughs> so um, it, there it seemed to be a lot of balls in the air. Um, it will be here indefinitely, and I fear that means forever. Um, it's not really fair um, to put it on other people, really, when we're creating it here. We contain it, we secure it, we store it, we monitor them, and make sure that nothing, is, uh, nothing uh, comes out into the environment or affects people. While nuclear waste continues to be a concern, the demand for an improved energy source is higher than ever. INL hopes to shed light on the future of nuclear energy, like it did 70 years ago when the lights went on in ARCO. The INL plans on powering up the Marvel microreactor in 2024. Now looking further into the future, the INL will be developing more projects to advance nuclear energy, including another microreactor, test beds, and a versatile test reactor. It's interesting stuff. Uh, you know, I've been here a long time and I've got to learn a lot more about what's going on at the INL there. Jude, thank you for that special report. I also want to let you know, if you'd like to take a deeper dive into how micro reactors run and how renewable energies can work together, we have a story on our website, ktvb.com.